Good morning. This is the Citrus County Planning and Development Commission public hearing for October 20th, 2022. If you'd like to join us at this time, I invite you to please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, please give us the grace to be understanding, patient, and tolerant. With these attributes, we can conduct our work in a manner which is pleasing to thee, our county, and its residents. In the Lord's name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could have the roll call, please. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. The following Planning and Development Commission members are present this morning. Robert Bass, Chair. James Royce, Second Vice Chair. Richard Barnes. David Bramblett. Michael Facemeyer. Kurt Stone. Carol Scragg, Alternate. And School Board Representative Chuck Dixon. Thank you. If any person decides to appeal any decision made by the commission with respect to any matter considered at this hearing, he or she will need a record of the proceedings, and for such purposes, he or she may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made, which record includes testimony and evidence upon which the request is to be based. During public input portions of the meeting, individuals are given three minutes, representatives of an organization are given five minutes. When anyone wishing to speak comes to the podium, Please complete a yellow form to hand to the recording secretary. Please print your name, address, and number of application for which you are speaking on the form. Yellow forms can be found at the podium by the door. If representing an organization, a letter of authorization must accompany the speaker. Comments will be limited to the topic being heard. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give your address for the tape record. This is an opportunity to have to come forward and address to the commission any issues that you may wish. I'd just like to note that CPA AA PUD 22-12 has been withdrawn if anyone is here for that application. Good morning, my name is Paul Furman. I'd just like to point out that there's a problem with the Land Development uh, Division's website. When you go to the Planning and Development Commission link and try to bring up the uh, agenda for this meeting. It takes you to the uh, Clerk of Courts uh, website, which has only uh, archive uh, minutes and agendas. I, Vicki was kind enough to give me the correct link uh, to the uh, agenda information for this meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there are no minutes to approve staff announcements. None at this time. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Our county attorney, ex parte communication. With regard to the application that you're going to consider this morning, have you had any uh, ex parte communications you need to disclose? And we'll start with uh, Commissioner Dixon. No, ma'am. Site visit. None. 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 Site visit. None. None. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Our first application is PUD 22 05. If staff could give us a Intro, please. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. This application is a request to modify a master plan for a single family residence with an accessory dwelling unit. <clears throat> Here is the aerial view of the subject property. Here we are looking west on <coughs> West Kingston Drive. Looking east on West Kingston Drive. Looking at the subject property, looking west, looking south. <clears throat> this is the current approved master plan. The new master plan is as submitted by the applicant and the applicant stormwater plan. Thank you. Thank you. If the applicant is present and would like to make a presentation. Good morning. Once again, I'm Paul Furman with Furman Civil Designs. For this application, I'm representing David Lamond and Brandy McCabe. 
In 2018, I appeared before this board rep representing a previous developer for a portion of this property. The board granted approval for a plan development consisting of three family, three single family homes with design drainage and central water and sewer. The plan is what you see on the screen. However, the previous developer decided not to proceed with the project and sold the property to David Lamond and Brandy McCabe, who already owned the adjacent two lots, which were not included in the previous plan development. The property for this application now includes all 11 of the original lots that are bounded on the southeast and west sides by man-made canals and on the north side by West Kensington Drive. The new owners intend to construct a single family residence and a guest house on the property. Design drainage will still be provided according to section 6420 of the Land Development Code and there will still be connections to central water and sewer. Site development plans have been submitted to the County Building Division for permitting. The same plans were also submitted with this application, but I see that only some of the plan sheets are included in the staff report and the application package. If you like, I have the other plan sheets. There is some discussion of natural, ve uh, natural vegetation buffer in the staff report, but I did not see that the buffer requirements were included in the staff's suggested conditions for approval. I am requesting that this board approve the application without that requirement. And here are some reasons why. I looked at the historical aerial photographs for this area. The canals were dredged sometime between 1960 and 1974 and are obviously man-made. In Citrus County, a natural vegetation buffer is typically required only adjacent to natural wetlands. Typically, the Land Development Division has waived the requirement for a natural vegetation where A, the site is adjacent to a man-made water body such as a canal, and B, the subject property does not have a natural vegetation buffer. And Joanna, you can confirm this for the satisfaction of the board. Also, uh, no additional landscaping is being required for this project. This property does have a lot of trees. Many of them are along the canals. The owner intends to keep the trees along the canals and clearing will be only as necessary for site improvements. The proposed stormwater management plan shows a six inch deep perimeter swale that will be meandered along the upland side of the existing trees <coughs> along the canal bank. In some places, the swale may be less than 15 feet from the top of the canal bank. This should not be considered detrimental to the adjacent canal as it will provide water quality treatment for more of the property. If the stormwater swale must be set back 15 or 25 feet from the canal, there will be some grassed areas between the swale and the canal, not natural vegetation. The runoff from these areas will drain lit directly into the canal. If these grassed areas are fertilized, the runoff could degrade the quality, quality of water in the canals. Once again, I am requesting that the board not require a setback from the canals for the stormwater retention swales. There are some photos of the site taken by staff that show the trees and the lack of other natural vegetation along the canals. Um, there is another set of uh, PowerPoint slides that show more of the um, vegetation along the canals. I also have some photos uh, on a CD that uh, you can look at. I have noted in the narrative submitted with this application that there are a couple of other waivers being requ requested for this project. These were approved before, but may still require approval. One is for 
uh, Land Development Code Section 6403E.2, which requires a minimum of five acres for a PUD. This uh, site is much less than that. The other was for a sidewalk requirement, but I couldn't find that in the code. It may actually have been from an older version of the code. I apologize. I would also like to request a time frame of 10 years to allow for the construction of the guest house, which is not uh, planned in the near future. We have no objection to the other approval conditions suggested by staff. Some of these conditions have already been met, namely the submittal of a residential stormwater management plan that includes erosion control measures. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from staff? Uh, yeah, please. Um, let's do the easy one first. Uh, you don't want to do the guest house right away, but they do want to do the residence within three years. Is that right? The, yes, there's already been okay, so once submitted for that. Right. So once the residence is established, the PUD is established, so that expiration date will go, you will be able to put that guest house in there, although we can add something in there for that if that's what you want. Um, about the buffer, it's a comp plan policy, so staff can't waive it. What we've had is some people have presented lots to this board that are already clear cut decades ago, and we can't really do a lot about that. Um, how close are you trying to get with your grading to the actual um, water? What's the setback you're looking for? It's probably going to be no closer than 10 feet. Okay, so so 10 feet you can do and then keep the vegetative buffer. It's not the entire length of the, of the shoreline. No, and I was hoping we could see more uh, slides of the shoreline. I have some that uh, I took. In, in most it. places, it, there's plenty of trees along the canal bank, but like, say, 10 feet from the canal is where the clearing has started. started. Okay. And that's, that's a good place to put that swale right there where it's not going to interfere with other uses on the site. Can you put this, pour the stormwater one up? I think it was the very last slide. Whoops, too far. <laughs> and, and we don't have a tree location survey, so all I've done is noted on the plan that the swale will be meandered, you know, along the... Uh, the trees. The You're tree trying line. to keep trying to keep some of the tree shoreline, and then uh, there. Can you point about where you think you might be encroaching on ten feet instead of fifteen? Is it? I have a slide that shows one a couple of those areas. It's in it's in your packet. Can you can you just point? Is it near the house up here, or is it near the guest house? A yeah, there's a pointer, but that's okay. You're fine either way. I go up there and do the Vanna White a lot. Okay. You're fine. You say there's a pointer, but can we use it? Yeah, he's, well, he's. <laughs> Fine. So there's one area, like, right in here. Okay. And then up in here. Those are pretty much the only two areas that I saw. The rest of the areas pretty much have trees, which can be, uh, you will end up with 10 or 15 feet at least. Okay, so you can do 15 feet except for those few areas. All right, thank you. I just wanted to clear up exactly how much you were looking for. Again, that would be helpful if you could see the slides that I uh, have. Did he not turn them in in time? No, apparently we don't have them. They, they didn't come in and Can't before use the quasi. We're, we're kind of well, stuck with our ordinance. There's some other slides in the, the staff photos that, that show it better. Okay, so yeah, when she has her presentation. Slide in our package, it gets the staffs. It shows what the is talking about. Okay, so after Miranda's presentation, there might be a slide that's helpful for that. Any, excuse me, any questions from commissioners? Yeah, just to clarify, so when we're looking at that stormwater and it's going like this, that's your best estimation of where some of those larger specimen trees and things like that that you want to leave along the bank line are. Once again, we don't have a tree survey. Right. So the, uh, the trees will, the swale will follow the tree line. Okay. But it's in some places it could be closer than 15 feet to the canal. But not more than 10. I would say probably not closer than 10. Not not closer than 10. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just a clarification. You said that you will attach to central water and sewer, correct? Yes, sir. And there's a plan in our package that shows the details of that. Okay, just want to make sure that. And then I believe you were looking at the house being 65 feet from the canal 
which I think was a deviation from our standards. Is there any reason why you cannot meet 100 feet? Because it looks like you have quite a bit of room that you could move the house in a northerly direction, I guess it would be. Yeah, the previous uh, approved plan, I think, had a 25 foot setback from that on that side. So we're actually offering more with this application. Okay. And once again, it's a, it's a man-made canal. I guess it maybe uh, originally had, had been a spring run, but it's, you know, since then been dredged. Okay. It's not a natural water course. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for uh, we'll have public presentation or public opportunity in a moment, sir. Miranda? Well, it's just coming forward. I should have made it clear. He asked about the um, size of a PUD. That requirement for acreage has been removed from the LDC, so that's not applicable. We don't need any standards for that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning, Amanda. I hope you guys are not as cold as I am today. <laughs> Okay, this application is to amend an existing PUD for a single family residence and accessory dwelling unit in the LDR district. The subject property consists of 11 lots and is approximately one and a half acres in size and is surrounded by water on three sides. The property is currently vacant and the surrounding area has some vacant properties but mostly consists of single family residences that have been here prior to the land development code. Originally, this property actually consisted of 15 lots, but was reduced to 11 lots uh, by a lot reconfiguration in 2008. There is an active lot reconfiguration to uh, combine the 11 lots into one lot. Right now, uh, the current access is from South Andes Point, which is a 20 foot wide private um, right away. And so during the lot reconfiguration process, uh, that uh, roadway would have to be removed uh, privately, um, and thus uh, the access will be proposed off of um, West Kingston Drive. West Kingston Drive, it, uh, this is looking at West Kingston Drive looking west. It's a standard 50-foot uh, public right-of-way. This is looking at the subject property from the uh, right-of-way. This is looking at the canal on the west side of the property. This is looking at one of the residences across the canal. We'll go here first. Uh, here's looking at the south end of the property. The previous PUD had noted uh, there is a spring run canal on this uh, side, which requires a 100 foot waterfront setback. There is vegetation on the property um, adjac adjacent to the water body. So the comprehensive plan states that you have to have minimum buffer requirements for waterfront lots in this particular area along the south side. It's a 25 foot requirement, buffer requirement. And uh, you can also see that there's vegetation here on the east side of the property, which requires a 15 foot uh, vegetative buffer. Here's a photo of one of the residences across the canal and uh, that, was, that was established before the land, of, land development code. And here's another residence. Um, I didn't do a comparative analysis because of the uniqueness of this property, but um, those houses also do not meet the uh, current uh, LDC standards. This is the master plan of the existing PUD that was established in 2018. That PUD did not include lots 54 and 55 uh, that are now requested in this proposed PUD. The 2018 PUD requested three single family residences on individually platted lots which shared drainage and other common areas. There are multiple deviations um, requested during uh, that time, uh, one being the 15 foot setback from the East and West Canal, and then the 25 foot setback from the Spring Run Canal. This is the proposed master plan. The uh, single family residence uh, in red um, is proposed for two stories and that uh, building footprint's approximately 2,500 square feet. The setback request to the Spring Run Canal is 65 feet, as you heard. Uh, the future guest house in purple um, can be a maximum of 850 square feet. And the applicant had requested 39 feet, which actually meets LDC standards, so uh, that is not a deviation. 
The mean high water line and jurisdictional wetland line will be required at the time of permitting. And the plan also indicates an ISR of approximately 11%, which is within the limit of the LDR district. Here's the applicant stormwater plan. As mentioned earlier, there are required vegetative buffers in the comprehensive plan for waterfront lots. And if the board wishes, uh, we can create a condition that talks about the maximum extent possible. Um, so we can address that. Um, at time of permitting, the plan may need to be modified depending on uh, the condition. Overall, staff is in support of the 65 foot setback requirement from the Spring Run Canal because previously, oh, well, the current uh, PUD allows for 25 feet. Also, um, the current established 2018 PUD requested 15 feet along the East and West Canals. This applicant is not requesting those deviations. Um, also, going from 11 lots to one lot uh, removes the non-conforming lots in the LDR district that will not be allowed in today's current standards. Um, also, going from three lots three single family residential uh, lots to one lot is an improvement and providing a PUD uh, that provides safeguards um, also addresses any environmental concerns or any other concerns. I did uh, place in the packet uh, uh, the current uh, proposed uh, building permit plans that they have submitted. Here's an elevation of the residence and also the floor plan. Um, staff did propose the conditions in this staff report based on the um, 2018 PUD conditions. Um, I would like to add a condition. I know I talked about this previously about South Andes Point being neat, uh, South Andes Point uh, needs to be removed at time of uh, the lot reconfiguration. So I'd like to add a condition that requires South Andes Point to be removed at uh, before time of permitting. Yeah. That's all I have. Any questions for Miranda? Go back to the color type. Oh. Or Miranda can, that's fine. Got it. Any other, any questions? I, I understand what you're saying, Miranda, regarding the setback from the waterfront on the south side was far less than this, and we're now at 65. Is there any reason why we can't have it at the 100 to meet our requirements? Because there's certainly plenty of room to move this home, and I don't think there'd be any adverse impact to the potential builder and buyer. Yes, it's possible, but I looked at it as the current PUD is not yet expired. So um, it, it was established in 2018, so they actually have um, that approval was granted for 10 years. So they actually have to 20. 28 to um, do that PUD, so I saw it as a major improvement. Okay. So they are allowed currently to build those three single family residences. Okay, thank you for the explanation. I appreciate it. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. You didn't ask the applicant, but I don't think he has any. You didn't ask the applicant if he had questions on the staff, but I don't think he has any. No, I was going to. Any? Questions from the applicant, <clears throat> from the for staff? If we could go back to one of those slides that shows the vegetation along the canal bank a little bit better. Uh, that one right there. If, if you look on the left side of that slide, you can see kind of where the mowed area begins. It's not very far back from the top of the bank. And there are a few trees that you can see uh, close to the top of the bank, and the, the intention is to uh, construct the stormwater swale in that area behind the, the uh, vegetation right along the bank and um, among the trees in the, in the mowed area. It's not really natural vegetation, and they don't intend to really take out any trees there. Just meander a six inch deep swale, you know, in that area there. It'd be very passive looking, shouldn't disturb. Uh, in the existing trees, and it'd be easy to maintain uh, as a grassed area. All right, thank you. The public portion of the meeting will not be will not be opened. If there's anyone present in favor of the application who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium.
As a reminder, individuals have three minutes to speak and organizations have five minutes. When speaking on this application, please address the board. If you have any documentation that you want to be entered into the record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? If you'd like to speak in favor, sir, please step up to the podium. My name is Larry Jones. I'm a neighbor uh, in that in that community. I have no <clears throat> expertise in any of this, but basically, I just wanted to say that Dave is a good friend. Uh, we've discussed this just you know over over the backyard fence. I know his intentions are modest. Um, this would not be anything different than what already exists in that area. In fact, it would be uh, a lovely spot. It sounds like, in other words, it's not intrusive or anything like that. And uh, also, I should point out, I'm not sure the specifics as far as the spring runs and stuff, but um, I just think it needs to be emphasized that wherever the springs, there's springs spread all through here, little springs here and there. But all of this, all these canals are man-made. They're 30 feet deep, which is deeper than anything around there. And uh, everything is straight as an arrow. So as far as I'm all for conserving the natural parts of Florida, I'm a cracker myself, but this is, this is not what God had put there. Uh, this has all been dredged and dug and what have you, and so you know, even that, from what I understand of these plans, it won't uh, won't even change any of that. So I just, again, I don't, I'm not an expert on any of the technicalities, but especially if it was already approved for three houses, and now he just wants to put one with a guest house, I just don't see uh, uh, what the problem would be. Anyway. I just wanted to throw my uh, two cents in for the sake of Dave. Uh, again, I think this is a, a modest thing he wants to do. And from a reasonable, ignorant citizen's perspective, I don't see why he shouldn't be permitted to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to, excuse me, sir. Sir, if you could leave the yellow slip with our recording secretary. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? If there's anyone present who is opposed to the application who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium. Sir, yes, make sir. sure you hand a copy of the uh, yellow slip to our recording secretary. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Rager. I live at 2290 South Gabin. Lot 58. Uh, just for, uh, just to uh, remind everyone, my application says here, if you live within 500 feet of the affected property, I like Larry, he's a good guy. He lives about a quarter of a mile away from the affected property. This doesn't even concern him, really. Okay, when I moved here in 2020, November of 2020, I was going to buy the dilapidated property that's to the corner where the springs are in question. Uh, I called code enforcement and I talked to the local uh, residents and they told me, well, you could buy it, but you can't do anything with it because you have to be a thousand feet from a natural spring to go ahead and uh, develop anything. So that idea was killed. Now, of course, the canals are man-made, the natural spring's not man-made. The natural spring is there all the time. In fact, that whole area uh, is flooded with manatees starting right now until about March. So it doesn't need any more pressure from any more property owners or any more residents at all. Um, and like I said, it was a thousand feet, I was told back in 2020, and this proposed property it's not even a hundred feet. It should, you know, that's, and they're trying to get 65. Uh, I would like to know how that became the new standard. How did it go from a thousand feet to 65? Also, I was told, I wasn't even gonna show up today because I do believe the guy has a right to build a home there. But I didn't know that there's a guest house in the works too. And the guest house is going to be on lot 48 right across from where I live. I just put, you just showed a picture of my building up there a little earlier. 
Uh, yeah, I, I surely don't want a guest house right across from the canal where I just put my dock. And it's all permitted, everything's on record where I just put my dock up. So a single family, there's, it's mentions a single family resident, but they're already talking about a guest house to come. How many more guest houses are gonna be happening on this property? Is it one lot? Can he lot this out in the future? I mean, where's the standards on that? I'd like to get a definite answer to that question. How much can he develop this property? There are beautiful trees on this property. I haven't seen a, a tree site plan. I did hear, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, I did hear this gentleman say, well, the trees will be cut down accordingly to go ahead and comply with the lot regulations and the site regulations. I want to know what trees are cutting down. That place is beautiful. I see woodpeckers in there, raccoons. I've even seen deer in there. So it's a beautiful little wilderness. That's why I bought the house I'm at now. Can I keep, can I keep speaking? No, your three minutes is up, sir. Okay, well, I have other concerns as well. But uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Happy to have any closing remarks. <coughs> Thank you. We'll close the public hearing and bring it to the commission for discussion and possible actions. Anyone wishing to? Does anyone want to address the public's Mr. Raider's questions? <clears throat> I believe that would be up to staff to try to help us with that, with the thousand feet versus I'm not aware of any time that we had a thousand feet to the spring run. So, um, at least as far as I know, it's always been a hundred feet. As far as his other uh, concern about can he build anything other than the PD? Well, the PD provides that safeguard, so you can have the house and the guest house. So, um, the applicant's bound by the PD. Thank you. I would add, I'm hearing a lot of stuff about it's man-made, it's not man-made. It doesn't matter to the code. Water is water. Whether it's a natural water body or a man-made water body, they're treated the same with the regulations. Thank you. Any any questions or comments from the commissioners? I, I sort of have a question then. Go ahead, Go ahead Mr. Stone. You were first. Um, I, I, for one, find it refreshing that... Uh, somebody wants to develop a piece of property and not put the maximum amount there possible. Uh, I note that the original development had uh, uh, provisions for uh, 11 houses on this piece of property, which I don't imagine too much of the natural vegetation or the trees would su survive along with that, not to mention the pressure on the canals, be they man-made or natural. So uh, I, for one, am in uh, support of this. Thank you. Commissioner Bramblett? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to question Ms. Katu based on the whole spring run water is treated as water. Then why is it different when if it's 100 feet and then the rest of the water would be a, a 35 spring or 50? run is different when there's okay. an active spring run, which we happen to know that we've been told there's one here. Right. So that side would have the, the larger setback when there's not a spring. The canal is treated as a canal, whether it's man-made or not was my right. point. Okay. You just said water is water, and then like, yeah, but true. spring okay. run, spring run water. Bubbling is water is different. a slightly different water. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> There's wet yeah. water and dry water. Spring run are different. <laughs> yes. So is that considered a spring run or not? Do we have documentation on it? Yeah, the PUD had some documentation previously that it, it said there was a spring run at this location. Who's, who says it's a spring run? Like the, somebody just says, "I say it's a spring run." They like, just testified that there's springs. I'm just asking. I mean, anybody can come in here and testify and say there's springs. Right, I personally assess, know there's springs there. I've been there right, and swimming. You ass, but, and you assess the credibility of the witnesses and decide whether or not you believe them. Right. And I'm just curious, like, how, like, individually the county, the staff would know, is this truly a spring run? Because does the county assess? Uh, Kings Bay, we know it's a spring run. And obviously I'm way off topic here. I'm just, now we're just spitballing and learning based on the code. So how do we how do we know that it's a really a spring run most of the time? We've had other ones too. Even in like Chasawitzka, we know. Right. There are actual professionals that will certify where the spring runs are. We have some documentation historically, so it can be a combination of those. Right. So if I was an applicant and I knew there was a spring there, I, I if I wanted to be closer than 100 feet, like 
I wouldn't come in and say, this is a spring run. No, but if we knew of it or we saw it, then it wouldn't matter. We would, right. we would testify accordingly. Okay. Don't, don't encourage around the code there. I'm not, I'm definitely not encouraging. Well, I'm just, it just and, raised a question when you said we treat water as water. And then I wanted to know how do we differentiate between the two? <clears throat> I wouldn't admit to perjury either. I, I wouldn't, but there's a lot of people that would. You just did. If no, I was I, the applicant, I would say. I, that was a, like a hypothetical situation. <laughs> so there was a hypothetical perjury then. <laughs> So you're hypothetically under arrest. It's, it's, on, it's on tape now. Yeah, probably so. don't want that on video, but <laughs> it's just me. Um, any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just um, I have a question. Uh, Miranda, we, we talked about the uh, single-family dwelling and potential <laughs> guest house. And we say that is what it is, and that's what would be approved if it passes. Um, can that be amended in the future where it is what it is and that's all it will ever be? So as far as the owner, number, somebody in the future could say, you know, I'd like to expand that guest house into, you know, 3,000 square foot okay. single family dwelling. The guest house or the residence? Guest house. Uh, well, you have on the plan there, it says 850 right. square feet and also the land development code restriction to 850 square feet. So it's bound by it. So, so yeah. we're pretty it's confident, at eight hundred. We're pretty confident that that's right. Well, it would be. Yeah, it says the code says living area, but yeah. Okay, uh, and I just have one comment. Uh, when I made the site visit, um, uh, my observation was there between the trees and the, the vegetation along the canals. I don't think we need to require additional uh, natural buffers. That's just. I think there's enough there. My observation. Existing condition nine, which was struck through from the previous PUD, but we can dust it off, was um, the development will avoid grading impact to the required minimum waterfront wetland buffer area to the maximum extent possible. I, I cringe at that wording because there's not really any criteria for what maximum extent possible is, although I think that Mr. Furman has testified, and I think he did previously on this PUD as well, that he is trying to avoid tree lines um, and we'll try to meet the 15 whenever we can. So I think we've clarified that if you want that condition in there again. You can also put in parentheses maybe no more than 10 feet. Right. What was your comment, Miranda? Thank you. Oh, sorry. I said in parentheses we can also add no more than 10 feet encroachment if, if that's what the board chooses. How's everybody's feeling about that? I would, I would be okay with that. That sounds good. With, <coughs> with the 65 feet? No closer. No yes, Attorney Lynn. Well, well, I have a problem with that language because, um, you know, five years from now, somebody might be charged with enforcing this. And if you put some, I'm not sure what the uh, suggestion of parentheses does to anything. Either you have a criteria or you don't. I encourage all boards that I represent to have objective criteria that five years down the road, some staff member reading it knows what either to the maximum extent possible means or they know why something was put in parentheses. Either have a standard or don't have a standard. Have something that's objective that somebody can enforce five years down the road or don't. Um, I would encourage you to please have something that is objective that five years down the road we can enforce for you so that we enforce your orders. And as to whether or not this PUD can change, of course the PUD can change because you're changing a previous PUD, right? There was a PUD. They've come to you to ask you to change it. So five years down the road, somebody could ask a future board, please change this PUD. So that's why I always encourage all the boards I represent to be consistent so that we know five years down the road that the board sitting there can say, well, five years ago, the gentleman and lady that sat on the board wanted it this way for a reason. And, you know, we need to think about why we would potentially change it. So, yes, it can be changed. And if you're going to have a standard, please make it objective so someone can enforce it. Thank you. Hey, I asked a question. No, sir, the public is closed now. Thank you. Uh, so, if I follow you correctly, you would say that we should be definitive as far as that this will can be no closer than... 10 feet, and then we've hit that defined limit, which would then allow it 
the person five years down the road to be able to defend what actions we took. Yes, correct. Or okay. 15, whatever number, right. just I, I just said number, 10 feet. Just but for, be definitive so that in the future we're not wrestling with, well, what did they mean? Why was right. the parentheses? Was the parentheses because they weren't sure they really wanted it that way? Or was the parentheses to really clarify what came before the parentheses? I don't know what parentheses mean. Right. Okay. So please be definitive. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts at this point in time? Um, I would just echo Mr. Stone's <clears throat> remarks earlier that the property, um, you know, there's a lot of properties out there in that particular area that are on those tiny little home sites. And this particular property is um, going from three homes down to one with a guest house. And I would be in favor of it with the conditions. And then we can totally amend number nine to make it fit Miss Lynn's suggestion of objective criteria. I, too, am in favor of the application, but I do believe that uh, item number nine needs to be modified. I believe um, Miranda also stated that we needed a condition regarding the uh, vacating of South Andes Point. I believe that was a condition that you wanted to add. Um, do we also have to add a condition that revises the existing legal description to eliminate the unrecorded subdivision? Or is that not necessary? Uh, no, that that will be done during the lot reconfiguration. Okay, I think that's and in your comments, Miranda, uh -oh. um, the property is located within the coastal high hazard area and is outside of the plan service area. The applicant has stated that he will tie to central water and sewer. Because of that statement that you have, that it's outside the plan area service, he wanted, should we put a condition in here that clearly states that he will attach to central water and sewer? It's up to you. It was a previous condition. They just struck through it on number two. If it is available, I just don't want to tie it because it is outside the PSA, so I'm not, I mean, if the applicant's testifying that. Right. Well, that's, he's can, testified that so. it was there. I would like to see that as a condition. I mean, he has testified to it. I think that we should include that as, seeing as he is the one that clearly okay. stated. So, uh, well, uh, it's number two. So we'll, we'll add that back in. Okay. So we can reinstate number two. Yes. Okay. All right. And item number nine regarding the setback. Uh, I believe the applicant also mentioned that he was looking for a minimum setback of 10 feet from the canal. I, I think that that number nine could be rewritten to indicate that the swell can be no closer than 10 feet and that the trees shall be preserved to the greatest extent possible or well, Denise I, didn't like the combat of that. So um, if you did want to put it in, I would say, uh, well, looking at condition nine, the development will avoid grading impact to the required minimum waterfront slash wetland buffer area no closer, no closer than 10 feet. Okay. Ms. Lynn, does that satisfy your future concerns? They're, how, they're, about you, how about your present concern? My present, present concern <laughs> for future, yes. Do we feel, uh, do you feel comfortable as how we've modified this now? Yes, you said 10 feet. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. 10 we feet all with know no what, parentheses. Yeah, we all know what 10 <laughs> feet means. Okay. All right. From where? From um, the I think what, it's neat where's either. Where's the edge of the canal? Is it says uh, minimum waterfront wetland buffer area. Is this canal tidal? So do we have high tide, low tide? I think they, didn't they establish it's, it's the It's from high the water? mean high water yeah, line. Mean high water. Mean high water. Yes. Okay. Um, seeing as we've made some modifications to the conditions, does the applicant have any concerns with the few changes that we have made? No. Could you please come up to the podium so we can record it, please? Thank you. There's some con concern, you know, by staff about where the mean high water line is and where the wetland line is. 
And since this is a man-made canal, the, both of those are somewhere along the bank of the canal. And actually, for setback purposes, we're using the top of the bank, which is uh, more conservative than the or mean high water line or the wetland line. All right. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the commission? If not, do we have a motion for? Mr. Chair, for the purpose of a motion. Yes, sir. The Planning and Development Commission finds application number PUD-22-05 consistent with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code, and that this board recommends approval with the amended conditions of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented and the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. Second. We have a first from excuse me, first Commissioner Brama and a second from Commissioner Facemeyer. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other business to come before us? Uh, yeah, just a couple things, please. Um, Mr. Royce and Mr. Facemeyer, your terms are coming up on the end of January of next year, so I would encourage you both to uh, reapply to stay on this board, but that's up to you. Um, Excuse next me. Excuse me, if you could just have your conversation outside. I'll try to talk louder. Your next meeting, you have a couple applications. Um, both, both November meetings, I think, have three and four. Um, just a reminder again, December 15th, please, if you can, try to be here. I know that's a little close to the holidays, but we have a large agenda with a lot of items on there. And I'll say large agenda. I think we have four or five applications, but each one of them encompass a lot of units and a lot of uh, square footage. So December 15th, please try to be here if you can. We do not have a second alternate appointed yet. So I know I appreciate Ms. Gregg coming. That's it. So what is the timeline for Commissioner Ruiz and Commissioner Facemeyer to submit our interest? Anytime you want to, we'll be announcing it sometime, um, probably uh, in the November, beginning of December, as the board will announce there's openings. Do we have to, should we wait until that point? It doesn't matter, board? it doesn't matter. You can, you can go ahead and submit it now if you want to. We're not gonna say it's too early. <laughs> Seeing no other business, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Joanna, what are we doing with the Stillwell application? For today? I would put it away in your circular file. Um, it, it will change. Um, actually, he withdrew it. I'm sorry. Um, that one was withdrawn. So you're not going to see it again. Thank you, everyone. It's not out of